Good morning from Boonville, Missouri, everybody. I uh, realized <clears throat> the other day that uh, I've done classes on vitamin D, as in dog, and the importance, especially during this pandemic issue, of vitamin D levels. I'm seeing lots of people with clients who have labs and vitamin D levels that are significantly lower than <clears throat> what will protect them. Uh, and then I realized the most common vitamin uh, that people ask about is vitamin B, as in boy. So we're going to talk about the importance of vitamin B complex, or all the vitamin Bs, all the different vitamin D Bs, and what they actually do on a vitamin by vitamin basis. <clears throat> so lots of people over the years um, have asked about vitamin B supplements, B12 being the one that they ask the most about, and the one that they have the most experience with, whether that be by an oral supplement or by vitamin B12 shots, and they do that for energy. Some people do that for managing their weight or losing weight in, you know, in uh, concert with dietary differences, you know, different dietary approaches, and sometimes meal replacement shakes and protein shakes, etc. So that's kind of a tried and true use of vitamin B12, specifically as an injection. And of course, all the vitamin B. Um, vitamins are available uh, over the counter. As oral supplements, you can take them by droppers, you can take them by uh, mixing in powders, uh, and then of course my favorite, by injection. B12 is an easy injection to take. Um, B complex, um, also easy, stings a little bit more than just B12, uh, so it'll light you up a little bit if you take a vitamin B complex injection. And of course, B-complex is in, uh, incorporated into the lipotropic MIC B-complex injections that we use for fat burning uh, um, and weight loss and maintenance of weight loss once you've done it, uh, plus some management of blood sugar control as well as um, some effects on heart function that are positive. <clears throat> so really, what is important about vitamin B complex or all the vitamin B's. So they form a major group of nutrients in your body. You can get most of your vitamin B from your diet. Uh, however, however, the standard American diet is notorious for missing function appropriately. So I'm getting ready to start my physiology class on Tuesday at the State Fair Community community college and we spend a lot of time talking about nutrients and what they do in the body. So your body needs vitamin B, all of them, to perform various functions. They have they play a critical role in maintaining metabolic and physiologic functions and also help straighten out the body's structural integrity. So deficiency of B vitamins, which is fairly rare, most people um, in civilized countries um, have enough dietary intake of vitamin B uh, to not become deficient. So I can't remember if I've ever seen a vitamin B deficient person uh, based on their lab values, <clears throat> but they do get, even if they're not deficient, they do get uh, health benefits from taking supplemental vitamin B. So <clears throat> if you're suffering from depression or anxiety, if you have trouble with your memory, weakness, fatigue, lethargy, concentration, afternoon brain fog, skin complaints, hair complaints, brittle nails, or other chronic problems and symptoms, then vitamin B, vitamin B might be playing a role in that. Might not be this, the only role, which is the point of a health coach to figure out, or a functional medicine doctor, uh, to figure out <clears throat> how to put that all together. So what are the B vitamins? It's a group of vitamins essential for proper functioning and allow the body to convert foods into energy by supporting metabolism. And they also help form new red blood cells. Regeneration of brain cells. They improve cellular health and metabolism. And they maintain skin, hair, and nail health. <clears throat> so the benefits really are energy production, red blood cell production, uh, mental health stabilization, healthy neurologic function of the brain. Uh, they are involved in a healthy immune system function, healthy cell function, 
a healthy metabolism and then skin, nail, and hair health. Okay, so let's break them down. Vitamin B1 is thiamine. It supports adrenal function and it regulates activities of the nervous system. So this is vitamin B1. It plays a key role in nerve transmission and supports the metabolism of carbohydrates to release energy. Uh, and of course you've heard me <clears throat> rail against high carbohydrate diets for quite a while actually. Um, so vitamin B1 helps you metabolize those. If you have a vitamin B deficiency, B1, that's called beriberi. And the symptoms include loss of appetite, pain in the legs, shortness of breath, weakness in swollen legs. <clears throat> Thiamine. Intake will reduce vitamin B1 or thiamine levels. Um, so supporting those levels with supplemental, at least thiamine, uh, is helpful if you are a drinker, if you like alcohol. So the best food sources of thiamine are fish, chicken, sunflower seeds, grass-fed meats, black seeds, so black seed oil, dark green vegetables, and black beans. And the best form of supplemental vitamin B1 is thiamine pyrophosphate or thiamine diphosphate. Both of those are active forms of vitamin B1. <clears throat> Next is riboflavin or vitamin B2, which supports metabolism. It has an essential role in recycling glutathione, which is the most potent natural antioxidant in your body. And acetylcysteine, which you talk, which we talked about, or I wrote an article about, and we talked about, um, I think last week. <clears throat> the uh, FDA is trying to make N-acetylcysteine available by prescription only. So I came up with an N-acetylcysteine protocol of the ones that are available still. It's still legal to sell over the counter, and that's in my full script dispensary. So the common symptoms of B2 deficiency includes redness and swelling of the inner lining of the mouth, sore throats, sores on the lips, cracks at the corner of the mouth, and redness of the tongue. Again, most people are not going to get a vitamin B2 deficiency. Um, significant alcohol intake or alcoholism, you can, get, you can get a vitamin B1 deficiency and change the way your brain works leading to encephalopathy, which is associated with alcohol, significant alcohol abuse. <clears throat> the best, so back to vitamin B2, the best sources of this nutrient include almonds and grass-fed raw cheese, grass-fed beef, sorry, not raw cheese, raw cheese, beef, salmon, and dark green vegetables. Uh, it is a natural way of controlling cholesterol levels if you're worried about your cholesterol. Uh, so I have a significant number of people that have elevated cholesterol where their <clears throat> doctors are trying to put them on a statin, one of the most horrifying drugs there is, drug classes there are, and uh, niacin uh, at the appropriate dose can help stabilize cholesterol and actually reverse some of, <clears throat> reverse some of the numbers on cholesterol panels. So vitamin B3, niacin, is essential for energy production. <clears throat> it helps in the conversion of fats and proteins and carbo carbohydrates and energy, the food that you eat. And it's also needed for the synthesis of starch to be stored in muscles and liver for later use as a secondary source of energy. So we talk about this in physiology. Uh, there's the Krebs cycle, which is horrifying by itself. Um, and then you can use starch as an energy source if you are on a low-carb or low-sugar diet or a no-sugar diet. Um, that's the basis of ketosis <clears throat> for those that do intermittent fasting and low-carbohydrate, high-fat diets. If you get vitamin B3 deficiency, which you won't, um, <clears throat> uh, those are the symptoms. Easy to replace. The best food sources of niacin are tuna, salmon, chicken, turkey, and grass-fed beef. Notice they always say grass-fed beef. Okay, next vitamin B is vitamin B5 or pantothenic acid, and that supports the activities of coenzyme A, which is a molecule essential for converting fats, carbs, and protein into energy. Vitamin B5 also helps maintaining hormone balance 
and it protects the skin against the signs of aging. <clears throat> important for brittle nails and brittle hair and good skin. B5 deficiency, which you won't get, is in, uh, includes symptoms of fatigue and insomnia, irritability, depression, vomiting, a burning sensation in the feet, and recurrent upper respiratory infections. So it's protective of the lungs. So again, you may not have a deficiency of these B vitamins, but you may be in a suboptimal range, and we see that all the time. The best food sources for panathenic acid are eggs, avocados, cabbage, and mushrooms. And the best form of supplementation is D-panathenic acid B5. Next is pyridoxin, vitamin B6. Um, that vitamin I've used uh, when I was practicing obstetrics for years for help with gestational nausea and vomiting or hyperemesis gravidarum is the other name for that. And if you put that together with Unisom, you actually get <clears throat> Bendectin. Bendectin was banned by the uh, FDA uh, for supposed creation of fetal defects, even though it was vitamin B6 in Unisom. Um, so <clears throat> you cannot buy Bendectin, um, but you can create your own. So if you're pregnant and you have significant nausea, Vitamin B6, 50 milligrams twice a day, and Unisom twice a day will usually correct that, although you'll be tired a lot because you're taking Unisom twice a day. So let's talk about Pyridox in, uh, in other ways. It helps balance sodium and potassium in your bloodstream. It helps the production of red blood cells. It regulates hormone balance in women. And deficiency of this uh, nutrient um, <clears throat> involves nerve pain, anemia, skin problems, sores in your mouth, fatigue, anxiety, and So pyridoxin uh, and thiamine are important for brain function. The best sources of vitamin B6 are tuna, salmon, chicken, and chickpeas. So if you like hummus, you're getting B6. The best active form of supplementation for pyridoxin is pyridoxal 5-phosphate, or P5P. Uh, and again, all of these can be gotten in a B-complex B supplement that takes care of all of this for you. Biotin is next. That's vitamin B7. That is critical for adrenal function and promoting metabolic processes and regulating the activities of the nervous system. <clears throat> and also... Biotin is important in the health of your hair, your skin, and your nails. So biotin um, supplementation is the first thing I think of when uh, somebody tells me my nails are getting brittle and my hair is getting brittle and it's falling out. Uh, and biotin will usually help uh, with the health of those areas. Okay. Common signs of biotin deficiency, scaly red rash in the face, depression, hair loss, lethargy, hallucination, and numbness and tingling in the legs. And the best food source of this nutrient is fish, nuts, seeds, and eggs. So notice eggs keep coming up. The perfect food, like I've always said, eggs is the perfect food. <clears throat> and you can get biotin, just, um, it just says biotin on the bottle. Just make sure you get supplements from a reputable um, company that makes these um, these types of supplements. So I put together a full script uh, protocol for vitamin B complex and I'll share that with you when we get done. Um, since I looked through uh, what I think were the best uh, the best supplements for B complex and put them in that protocol. Okay next is folate or vitamin B9 primarily supporting digestive functions and the de deficiency of B9 or folate can result in intestinal disorders. Uh, and of course, folate and B12 together are kind of brain food. And some people cannot make folate, folate from folic acid supplements. So a lot of people will take folic acid. And if they have the, that MTHFR variant on their gene or a mutation of that variant, they can't make folate. So they have to take L-methylfolate, so they have to have a methylated folate to take. Most of the uh, supplements that I put in the full script protocol are methylated. 
And then <clears throat> um, B9 or folate deficiency, uh, sorry, uh, sources in your food are asparagus, broccoli, avocado. The best form of that supplement is activated methylcobalamin, um, or activated methylfolate, I'm sorry, L-methylfolate. So you can buy that by itself. And people that are MTHFR genetic variants, they need to take L-methylfolate. It has to be methylated for them. And then the one that everybody's heard about, vitamin B12. So vitamin B12 is um, easy to find. Uh, it supports nerve functions, cardiovascular function, blood cell formation, and helps you sleep. And deficiency of B12 would lead to neuralgia or nerve pain and sleep issues. Some of the best B12 sources in your diet are fish and beef, poultry and eggs, perfect food. Okay, so they're, you know, B vitamins are important for your health all over your body. It's that somebody had berry berry. Never, probably. We study it, but. <clears throat> Fortified, uh, fortified food should keep you from having deficiency. But what about suboptimal vitamin B levels, which we see all the time? What causes that? First and foremost is poor diet. So the standard American diet, you're not going to get the same amount of vitamin B from your diet with refined and processed foods and a lot of sugar. So lack of a wholesome, nutrient-rich food diet full of B vitamins may make you prone to not only vitamin suboptimal levels, but mineral deficiencies and suboptimal mineral levels. And eating too much sugar and processed foods triggers inflammation, and that creates imbalances in your microbiome in your gut. And remember, part of the B vitamins are for turning the th things that you eat into energy. So the disturbance in the gut can result in the reduced, liability, uh, reduced ability to break down, assimilate, and absorb the B, B vitamins from your diet. And hopefully it's a wholesome diet. Natural foods. <clears throat> Mental stress, the kill it most, the probably the most common, if you get right down to it, the most common reason people die, because stress will kill you. Chronic <clears throat> and high stress can cause vitamin B depletion. So those nutrients are then used up by your body to manage the inflammation and the chronic stress instead of doing what they're supposed to do. So that triggers inflammation, stress triggers inflammation, it triggers hormone imbalances, even contributes to poor digestion, and poor digestion leads to depletion of B vitamins, so suboptimal levels. And then poor stomach functions. B12 is absorbed effectively only in the presence of an acidic secretion pH level of 2 in the stomach. <clears throat> and there's intrinsic, intrinsic factor produced in the stomach, which is required for absorption of vitamin B12 from a dietary source. So you can get atrophic gastritis, which means you have stomach inflammation that decreases the secretion of stomach acid that can result in vitamin B12 malabsorption and can give you a suboptimal or even a deficiency of that nutrient. And then the use of medications for acid reflux, how many people you know do that? Reduces the, take those, reduces the ability all the things people take for heartburn, reduce B12 and absorption plus they have a, those people have a higher risk of insulin resistance and then type 2 diabetes. <clears throat> There's gut infections can affect you. Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth can lead to vitamin B deficiency or suboptimal levels. And then there's the genetics, the MTHFR variant, uh, which leads to less folate. So you can be taking all the folic acid you want. And if you cannot methylate it, and this is true for a lot of meds, I just got to ask, this week about how to determine if somebody's allergic to non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Well, that takes skin testing, 
but then there's a test that's done on cheek, cheek swab called pharmacodynamics or pharmacogenomics that will tell you based on your DNA profile what work based on your genetic profile. So part of that is MTHFR and then there's a whole gang of other uh, DNA things that they look at on pharmacogenomics uh, to determine what drug in each class is actually the best for your DNA profile. It's an amazing test. So <clears throat> I'm going to name names on best supplements and I put them in the full script protocol uh, that I'll share the link with you on, a, on the next post. So it's, make sure, it's making sure that your body can absorb and utilize vitamin B complex. So you need a high quality activated form of a complex B vitamin supplement. They're, so they're essential to your body for uh, optimal functioning of the methylation cycle like we talked about with taking L-methylfolate. And the methylation cycle is needed for your body to function physically and mentally. So your nervous system, your cardiovascular system, your liver to detox what's running through your blood. So this is not any specific order, <clears throat> but some of the suggested suggested B vitamins uh, and the ones that are available I put in full script. There's orthomolecular products for methyl B complex, life extension of course, um, quicksilver scientific, pure encapsulations, there's methyl B complex from all of those and there's two or three more that I put in the protocol. Um, <clears throat> And so B vitamins, in conclusion, really critical for maintaining cellular health. And if you have suboptimal B, uh, B complex or all the B vitamin, vitamin absorption, that can result in a wide array of symptoms including fatigue, depression, anxiety, weakness, brittle nails, brittle hair, skin issues, rashes. <clears throat> so you can correct that with a nutrient-dense nutrient -dense diet, avoiding processed and refined foods and simple sugars and sugar and supplements if you just can't eat maybe the way you should overall. <clears throat> also, of course, you know me and shots. You can be, get B-complex shot, shots. It takes a doctor's order, so I have my collaborators and functional medicine doctors that will help you get injectable B complex vitamins. Um, they're compounded and you just give yourself a shot once a week uh, and try to eat well. Um, and then there's lipotropic, lipotropic MICB complex, what I call the super skinny shot and the skinny shot. All of the B vitamins are in those injections. So if you're working on weight loss or maintenance of weight loss once you've attained your weight goal, uh, that's an easy injection that gives you everything you need to burn fat and help you metabolize glucose if you're eating it um, and especially if you're eating sugar um, so variety of ways to get B vitamins into your body um, especially if you're kind of addicted to sugar and you like the standard American diet so that's it for B vitamins I did that one instead of D vitamins because I've already done that one and there's more and more evidence for vitamin D in uh, protecting you from influenza and viral infection. And I'm seeing a whole, um, I usually see vitamin D suboptimal levels. Right now, I'm seeing clients with vitamin D deficiency during this pandemic, a little bit frightening. So I spend a lot of time talking about, to people about the importance of vitamin D. And since I hadn't done B complex, I thought I'd do vitamin B. So have a great day. Have a great weekend. Um, it's nice. It almost feels like fall this week here in mid-Missouri. Not sure why, but <clears throat> we're in the deep part of August, and I'm wondering if we're going to pay for it later. So I'll talk to you Monday, um, and I may do a little class on an article I wrote about climate stuff. This big 4,000-page report that was just released on uh the world's climate. So I'm thinking about putting a class together this weekend on that. Again, you can audit my class at State Fair Community College. I teach human anatomy and human physiology. Uh, you can email me at Brian J. Tracy MD, B R Y A N J T R E A C Y M D at gmail.com or shoot me a Facebook Messenger message. So uh, that's it. I'm going to sign off and you all have a great day. See ya. Bye.